Before The Last Dance aired, Michael Jordan said he thought people were going to change how they thought of him, that they would start to think he was, quote, a horrible guy. But Tracy, with the full picture, having seen all 10 episodes now of the documentary, has anything changed about your perception of Michael Jordan? Uh, yeah, just, I mean, just a little bit. You know, a lot of that stuff I, I already knew, but what I didn't know is that the extent that one individual will go to have an edge on his opponent. <laughs> and what I mean by that is the stories that he created in his own mind just to get extra motivation, like the, the guy that he played against, a young player, uh, LeBradford Smith, Bullets. poor LeBradford Smith. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he goes and drops 37 on Mike, and you know Mike creates this uh, this this tale in his head that the guy said something to him like uh, "good game, MJ" or whatever, and then Mike can't wait to the next night to see this guy, and he tortures him. But from what I get, that never happened. That the guy wished Michael a, a great game. Never. So, I mean, to to go that extent to have you know uh, uh, the motivation to overtake your opponent is just, I mean, it's just pure craziness from a guy. But it worked for him. I always thought, you know, a guy talks some trash to me, you know, uh, it, it it fuels me. But not to create a tale or story in my head to go after <laughs> another guy. I mean, that was just crazy to me. I'm going to be really honest. Nothing has changed about the way I view Michael Jordan. The only thing I wish is that guys like myself and T-Mac, who grew up, we grew up watching. But to have this content right now, imagine T-Mac having this content at 14, 15 years old Bro, for yourself. I said it that would to change. My friends. It, I know, I know it would have changed. And so I look forward to what it does for this future generation. Yes. That everybody gets a trophy generation. That oh, I want to be <laughs> friends with everybody generation. That is where this is going to have the best impact. The next 10. 15 years, 20 years of basketball. This is the best thing to happen to the NBA because it's going to influence the next generation. How much is winning important to you? How great do you mm -hmm. truly want to be? Are you willing mm -hmm. to sacrifice life, friends, everything for your greatness or to achieve, even for guys like Steve Kerr, John Paxson, for them to maximize, to gain the respect of great, great players, how hard that they had to push themselves to be a part of something. So this isn't for me and T-Mac and for our generation. We knew this. We played against him. We saw him. We did camps with him. This is for the growth of the game of basketball and internationally. No different than the Dream Team's inter impact internationally. I think this video, this documentary will have impact for the next 20, 30 years on athletes all around the world. Very, very good point. Man, I don't know. I can see all the kids trying to emulate Jordan because of this documentary. I also wonder who's going to emulate Dennis Rodman because of this documentary. If we ever have an NBA Finals again, is someone going to go to Las Vegas? This is what I want to know. All right, we do know not everyone thinks MJ is the GOAT. Over the weekend, 13-year vet Channing Fry made some comments on Jordan during his NBC Sports Northwest Talking Blazers podcast that set NBA Twitter ablaze, people. Here's the quote. He only really had one job, and that was just to score. And he did that at an amazing, amazing rate. But I don't feel like his way of winning then would translate to what it is now. Guys Whoa. would not want to play with him. Richard, this is your dear friend, your Whoa. former teammate. Uh, it's time well, me, to go get your boy. Whoa. It is time to go get my boy. Let me first say this. Channing has, he tried to do what I do. He tried to troll a little bit online. I don't think he thought anybody was really going to pick up on it the way he did. But like Channing, first of all, Channing is a Phoenix Suns fan. He is a big Phoenix Suns guy. He is not a Michael Jordan guy. Just like all those fans in Utah that you saw have their hearts ripped out by MJ, it happened to Channing when he was 10 years old, and it's still lingering today. But ultimately, my biggest issue with this is that Channing was having fun, and the funniest thing about it is that he literally answered every troll <laughs> online for two straight days laughing about it. And Channing, the one thing I said to him in our text chain was like, Channing, you can't do and make a joke like that during a two-month Michael Jordan ego stroke session. That is not the time. That is not the time nor the place. It's like, yeah, do I do I think that my kid could use uh, could 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 lose five or six pounds? Yes, he probably could, but I probably shouldn't say that out loud. I shouldn't hey, say it. Man, Just look, the truth. He was trolling everybody. There's no way you can watch that 10-part series and say Michael was just all about scoring. I mean, here's some factual information. Michael made the all-defensive team nine times. 
Michael was the nine times player of the year. <laughs> I mean, that's not just scoring. And just back in uh, the, the late 80s when Mike was playing, he had seven straight triple doubles. So the man, if he wanted to, just like I felt LeBron James, if he wanted to, he could average a triple double. Mike was just that gifted. It was just so he played with a facilitator like Scottie Pippen. His job was to score and, and then lock down defense. But he did way more things than just score the basketball. Way more. He won chips. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.